Welcome to the White Lotus channel. Thanks for being here. Deck review. David Royale's Cat Gates. Interesting build. There's a lot of a lot of different cat cat decks that are going around. Uh, the one that I've seen kind of recently is a Prismatic Strands version, but he's got a, a heavier red slant, which I like a little bit better because I think it gives the deck reach. But we're gonna break it down. It this it I wouldn't say that this is a a control deck. It's it's close. It's got twelve creatures, which is a little high for. I got fourteen creatures. Sorry, it's a little high for for a control deck. But it's also on the low end of a mid range deck. But it plays out kind of kind of like both. So I'm going to classify it as a mid range deck. But if somebody felt that it was a control deck. That's certainly fine. Um, I'm going to have a link in the description to David's channel, to the video he did on his version of Cat Gates. There's a little bit difference in this deck. The original list I saw of his had two copies of Blood Fountain in it, but that's when he was originally working on it. And then I saw the list that he didn't take the Blood Fountains out. So I have added the difference in this list. I've added a land and one wedding invitation replacing the blood fountains. So strategically, let's take a look at the curve real quick. Pretty smooth. Lots of ones, lots of two drops. Basically cuts off there. 20 lands, I think is sufficient. It is, even though the curve is, is really, you know, on the low end of things. It's a mana intensive deck because you're playing a gates package. So you're pumping creatures, uh, the land, the, when the game state wants as many lands as possible in play M minus flooding of course but all of your mana is, is being put to use um, you can take ginger brute for example if you're coming into play at some point in time in the game it's one to play it one to make it unblockable three three more lands to to tap it so that's five right so it's it's mana intensive for sure gameplay the game plan that is, I would suggest this. You you want to lead lead out with either Black Dragon or Citadel Gate. I usually go red uh, last in my colors. So your Black and Whites, Sacred Cat, Cauldron Familiar, Icker Drinker. That's going to be your first couple of turns. You're not going to have a lot of creatures in the opening hand, more than likely, with only 14. So if it's one creature and some draw spells off of Icker Wellspring, Lembas, Golden Egg, that's fine. Deadly Dispute. So you're just you're just kind of establishing the board state, getting as many lands in play as you can. My I would recommend trying to disguise Ginger Brute and Basilisk Gate as much as possible. Like you just don't put out Ginger Brute turn one. You can against certain decks in the match we play. It's potentially a, a, an option. But you really want to hide Basilisk Gate and Ginger Brood. And if you can get to a later stage in the game where you've got a lot of gates in play, Ginger Brood can come out, tap, and, and get a lot of damage in. So first couple of turns of Sacred Cats, Familiar, Icker Drinker. All of these are recur uh, have recursion abilities. You've got the Embalm ability from Sacred Cat. Cauldron Familiar, you can sack to Golden Egg or Lembas. Icker, Icker Drinker. Um, you have the, it doesn't come back as itself like Sacred Cat and Cauldron Familiar does. But Inker Drinker, the, the cool thing about it, you have to play it on your main phase if you're going to recur from the graveyard. But when it makes the Incubate token, you can crack the Incubate token and make it a creature at any stage, your turn or, your turn or their turn. Got Galvanic Blast for reach, two copies of Improvised Club for reach, makeshift munition, uh, munitions for reach you might be able to cut make that one it's either way but definitely not more than two maybe you can go to one deadly dispute to draw one copy of reckoner's bargain a wedding invitation to make a cat unblockable or an ick or drink or unblockable so yeah you're going to pump your pump your cats countering when you <clears throat> the cool thing about the cats are recursion uh creatures yeah, you can counterspell it if you want to, but you're going to bring it right back, right? So you're, it's card advantage for you. 
Sideboard Dawnbringer Clerics, great for Journey to Nowhere because you want to recur your creatures and Journey prevents that. Standard Bearer is very cool. Uh, David does point out in his video, which I, I think is pretty neat, if you're playing an opposing Gates deck, Standard Bearer on the battlefield, if they go to target Basilisk, Basilisk Gate on their creature, it's got to go to Standard Bearer as well. End of the festivities for the go wide decks, Pyroblast for your mono blue terrors, UB terrors, fairies, Nile Spellbomb for terror, affinity, casting the fire to, to try to do some damage on affinity land base, or uh, the one damage to two target creatures. I bring this in against fairies uh, myself. I've, I've had success with it. Some people don't like the card that much. I, I think it's been pretty positive overall. So yeah, it's a it's a mid-range deck that plays out with pumping creatures to try to get them in there and gain life off the cat. Try to get a late game ginger brute to stick, pumped, unblockable for the win. And we'll go ahead and go to the next match here in just a second. Again, I want to point out David Royale's channel. He also has a, a, a website that he just started that has some merch on it, Pauper Merch. So if you want to support some Pauper gear, definitely check that out. Check his website out. Follow on, Follow him on Twitter. All of it will be in the description, and we'll go ahead and go on to game one. Match one, game one, unknown opponent. Interesting keep, unknown opponent. I don't really like to keep opening hands with two makeshift munitions in it. There's not a lot going on here. We need red and white uh, pretty quick. So play here is to go Sacred Cat, makeshift munitions on two, and see what we're dealing with, hopefully... Yeah, not makeshift munitions on two. Going Lembas on two would be the would be the play. Depends on what we're up against. Turn one island without a fairy seer or something else. I figure it's probably a terror deck of some variety, but we'll see. Definitely a terror deck with mental note and spell pierce in the grave from the opponent attacking first. Play Lembas. I, yeah, I can see countering it. It's an aggressive counter for sure, but you know, he's gonna make his plays, that's fine. Is it's doubly bad with makeshift munitions in hand against a deck that's not gonna do that great against, so Get in for a little bit more damage. Did not understand that counter. Uh, makeshift munitions shouldn't bother their game plan overall. I'm certainly not not launching things at Terror itself. Um, not looking good on my end at the moment. We're just going to try to go low. Try to cast as many... Anytime I'm playing heavy counter decks, you just want to resolve as many spells as you possibly can. Now, at this point, you're just doing math, right? So Terra's getting in for five. Let's assume he's not playing another Terra. We don't know that for sure. But at this point, he might go Terra. He's, he's swinging for five. But we're cracking back for two and gaining life on both. So Terra's really only doing three damage per turn, which I'm not fond about. But it's it's you know obviously not not, not as bad as five. And we got double blast for reach, but no, I'm thinking at this moment that galvanic blast is not getting in for four damage. It's going to be two each, but we'll see. One thing to note too, on this particular, the, the mono blue terror builds, We've already seen four spike. A lot will run boomerang. Some run vapor snag. He double tapped during the in the combat phase. So I I was confident that he had boomerang in hand, in hand and then changed his mind. Could have bluffed it though. Hard to say. Don't like missing the land drops.
Yeah, well, him. I know he, he missed his land drop, one of the frantic inventory that he played on his turn. It's 50-50. Maybe I wait for the opponent's turn. But he took a stab at it. Still missed it. No complaints on my end. I thought for sure another terror was coming down on this turn. Maybe it does. I don't remember. Nope. What One thing I really try to avoid that I, I can't stand is, is that tempo loss. I'm just getting in for any points of damage right here. Um, Gal Blast is not going to get in for four. So we've got a setup going on. We got two points off Galvanic Blast. Hopefully we can get in for some more. We've, you're dead on board with makeshift munitions, but I'm kind of playing the game out because we have more games to play after this, right? So I'm hoping to see as many possible cards as I can from the opponent, even though inevitability is here. And all I'm doing here is trying to get one point of damage in. I'm not trying to make Ginger Brute unblockable because what I'm planning to do on this attack, he's only going to block two. Maybe he, maybe he vapor snags. Doesn't matter. We would respond with makeshift munitions. But I'm just trying to get one point of damage in because I'm thinking Gal Blast is going to get countered. I know that. Just what counter, I'm not sure. So even though I'm stressing this point, some people might say, well, just go for the win right now. I want to know as many cards that my opponent has and that he's playing with and the, the likelihood that he plays certain things and in what situations that he's playing them. I'm just trying to get one point of damage in. My thought process is I'm going to cast Gal Blast. He's going to counter it. Then I can go ahead and play Cauldron Familiar for that last one point of damage if one of these three gets gets through, which it looks like. And if all that fails, you know we can go ahead and get the makeshift munitions win in. So that's why I'm playing it this way. Obviously, he counters that. And we got it. Let's go on to game two. Game two on the draw. So this is a fine hand. It's a little bit more creature heavy than I expect. Only running 14, but we've got four in hand. Two gates, Icker Wellspring. Don't really interact with the opponent here, but we've got a lot of creatures. And really against blue, if he's going to counter this aggressively... We just want to get to a position where we can get, get as many spells in uh, under the, all of that counter as possible. And this is a little bit of the tension that you'll get. Um, you've got white, black, but you need red too. We just don't really need red until the late game, especially in this matchup. would be different against maybe a more aggressive build, but... I don't really understand why the opponent counters the cat here when I can just bring it back on the next turn. We talked earlier about hiding the ginger brute. This is mono blue. Other than bouncing in vapor snags and boomerangs and things like that, they don't have a way to deal with it. So we're just getting in for damage. So we just adjust the game plan accordingly. Right against some other type of deck, we would hide that. I don't pump either here. Again, I'm trying to play as many spells as possible. Really want Niall's spell, spell bomb to get through, which I don't think he's going to allow. It might be Ni Niall's on the next turn, sorry. Sure. We're pumping here. Really hate getting tempoed out. Uh, if And I'm willing to trade, and I hope he's trading, which is why I make this play. I've got enough creatures to bring back. Um, they've got four Talarian Terrors and some Spire Golems. Yeah, this is, this is the turn where we try to get as many spells in play as possible. 
lets the cat go through. I didn't think he last time. I don't know. Maybe maybe he made a mistake, but I should have probably sequenced that with Nihil last. Probably been the better play, I think. But yeah, for sure, a hundred percent hate getting tempoed out. It's like getting time walked, you know, completely tapped out. Nothing happened. Just need to get some life back on the cat, which nullifies one of his terrors. So it's it's a pretty big difference in 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 swing. I'm going for the incubate, not the cat here. Yeah, one more one more gate without any kind of bounce. It's going to get kind of ugly. Opponents missing land drops. And concedes the game. So it's a it's an interesting deck to play. I, the first time the first couple of times you play it, there's that sequencing is so incredibly important. And finding points of damage everywhere you can is also incredibly important. So the first few matches. Things may seem a little clunky, but the more you get used to it, the better the deck becomes. I think it's a very good deck. It's fun to play. Um, it's got some got some reach with Galvanic Blast, Makeshift Munitions, Improvised Club. Um, Cauldron Familiar can get in for some. It's under undervalued. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's like a, a great card to have in a deck, but it, it's, it suits this particular deck. It's not Monastery Swift Spear on one, but it does get in some value. So interesting deck. Again, check David's channel out. It'll be in the description and in the comments section. Check out his merch store. Uh, love to hear your feedbacks on the deck. Also, too, we took the two Blood Fountains out. So if you have other choices that you would add, I added one land and one wedding invitation. What would you add? Love to hear your opinion. Thanks very much for being here. Stay safe. Be well.